What's up, y'all? This is DJ The Sports Blurred. I'm back again. Did y'all miss me? I missed you guys. I missed talking about college football. You know, a lot of things have happened uh, since I posted my last video about a week ago. Um, so Alabama, they got totally annihilated. They got smoked uh, in the national championship game. The Dallas Cowboys today have already played their first playoff game and lost of course, because it's Dallas. How about them Cowboys? I wish I could go to Skip's house, Skip Bayless's house one time and just say, how about them Cowboys? Especially after this big loss. Uh, another thing that's happened, I've grown back my beard a little bit. Uh, you guys really haven't seen me. I just started posting videos, uh, but normally I have a full beard. I've been posting videos with no beard. I've been looking at my videos and they look weird. And, uh, you know, one other thing I want to mention that's happened uh, these SEC fanboys have been letting me know that their conference is slightly above average. Uh, you guys are posted up in the comment section, you know, always trolling, always talking about how good you guys are. Um, and, I, you, you know, I do think the SEC is good, you know, but just slightly above average. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking somewhat at least. Uh, you know, I will say I recognize and respect the SEC as the best conference. I just believe the Big Ten from top to bottom is just as competitive. Uh, you know, the SEC has two elite teams, and those teams are a step ahead of the next guys uh, in any conference. Um, but, um, you know, I think while those two teams are at the top of the mountain, the rest of the SEC is mediocre at best. I think the Big Ten has a great collection of teams. And, um, you know, if there was some type of Big Ten SEC challenge, uh, I'd really like to see that. I know it'll never happen, but I would like to see it. But, you know, maybe that's a bit of a video for the another for another day. Uh, so today I just kind of want to give my thoughts on this year's playoffs and uh, kind of give a nice little introspective um, look at it from a week out. And I want to talk about all the four teams, uh, how I thought they competed, and then what I think about them going forward. So, you know, let's start with Cincinnati. There's a lot of football pride in that city right now. Uh, I live about an hour and a half away, and I'll tell you that the Bengals have picked up where the Bearcats have left off. If you look right here, I'm a Bengals fan. I got a Cincinnati shirt on. I'm not pro uh, I'm not ashamed to say I'm from Ohio and love my Ohio teams. Um, you know, so I think Cincinnati, Bear the Bearcats, I think they did the best they could uh, this year just by reaching the playoffs. I mean, I don't ever think that there's going to be another Cincinnati Bear t uh, Cats team that's going to perform better or have a better year than this year's uh, team did. I mean, they were outclassed, though, when they played Alabama. They were completely outclassed, uh, out physical, and any other term that you can think of, you know, when they played Alabama. And I'll even say Alabama looked like they stopped trying to run the score up. I, I just felt like they were trying to make it respectable. I, I think this could have been even more uh, out of control game. But I don't think that Nick Saban just wanted to run Cincinnati off of um, off the field since Nick, Nick Saban was also a small time football coach, too. So, you know, I think he had a lot of respect for Luke Fickle and what he was building over there. Uh, but like I said, I can't see them improving on this year, especially, you know, where they're going to be losing a veteran quarterback, you know, two top tier corners. Um, and potentially the greatest coach that the school's ever had in, in Luke Fickle. I mean, if you think back to uh, Brian Kelly, he's the current LSU coach. Um, but at one time, he obviously coached Notre Dame. But before then, he coached Cincinnati. And I think he just realized that Cincinnati um, can be an elite, kind of that mid-major program. Um, but I just don't think that can compare with the power, with the elites of the Power Five. So I think they can be like a Minnesota. I think they can be a Kentucky or, or, or whatever, you know. But when it comes to Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, you know, and some of the other big dogs, I just don't think they can knock uh, knock them off. Now, let's talk about Michigan. You know, this year was big for them. Uh, while they lost to, you know, the little brother Michigan State, they beat a very good Ohio State team. And, uh, I mean, that Ohio State team was playing very well at the time. I mean, C.J. Stroud was number one. Um, if you believe kind of the media outlets, he was the number one Heisman favorite uh, going into that game. And if you ask me if Ohio State was fully powered, I think they could have beaten Alabama or Georgia in the playoffs. Um, but I digress. Uh, you know, Michigan played Georgia and just got absolutely rocked. And they looked like they didn't even belong for most of the game. You know, this is a game that I thought Michigan would just kind of come out and, you know, they would just show up. 
uh, because this was their opportunity to stamp their season. And also, not, not only was it just an opportunity for them to stamp their season, it was an opportunity for them to, you know, prove that their season and their head coach wasn't a fluke. This was our opportunity to bring Michigan back. And of course, you know, it's Michigan we're talking about. So they went ahead and just did what Michigan does. They do Michigan things. I'm a Big Ten fan. I'm a Ohio State fan. So, you know, we were kind of rooting for Michigan, but we knew that you really can't put a lot of mi uh, money on Michigan. Uh, you just don't want to put, a, you know, your mortgage on Jim Harbaugh or anything that the Maze and Blue did because they went out there and embarrassed themselves. You know, I know they're going to re be returning some, some good uh, pieces. They have two really good quarterbacks coming back to fight for the starting role next year. You know, they're not going to be dropping off much. I know their best player last year was Aiden Hutchison. Uh, I know David uh, Ajabu is going to be going pro, and so is Chris Hinton. But the really big question is, what's Jim Harbaugh going to do? If he does not come back, I don't think they have a shot. I mean, I think they'll probably go 9-3 uh, and three next year or something like that. Um, but I don't think they'd have a shot to make it back even if he did return. But they definitely wouldn't have a shot. Uh, Alabama. Um, was this a changing of the guard in the SEC? I'm not really sure. Um, but every time I looked up for the last few years since Kirby Smart's gotten there, Georgia's gotten better and better and better. I mean, they've inched up to Alabama every year. And then now they're almost eye to eye with them. I mean, Alabama did expose Georgia and the SEC championship bowl, but I really think that was the best thing that could have happened to Georgia. They actually went to that game, in my opinion, like they've been there before. I mean, just really, really, really hyped up. Um, they smoked Alabama in the, in, in the, in the national championship game. I'll, I'll come back and, and give them that. And uh, Alabama just looked outmatched, especially late uh, in that game. Now, granted, they did have some really key injuries, um, but they still lost. Now, Bryce Young, I mean, he played very well early, and he looked poised uh, in that game. And let's not forget that he is just a first-year starting quarterback. He's just a, a sophomore in, in college. Uh, just a few years ago, he was playing on a high school football field. So to do all that and in his first year, win the Heisman Trophy, win the SEC Championship, get your team to the National Championship game, and that is a hell of an achievement. However, this is Alabama. This isn't, you know, Oregon. This isn't Oregon State. The expectations for Alabama, that Alabama program, are so high that this was seen as a terrible year, as a failure year for them. Um, you know, the one thing about Bryce Young, I thought he played well early, but late. I felt like he forced the ball a couple times, um, especially in that, and later in the fourth quarter. There was a couple times where uh, the game was still within reach. And, you know, instead of trying to get a short third down completion, I think he uh, went for the home run ball. There's a couple of minutes left. I, I would have to go back and see. A couple of minutes left. It was third and six or something like that. And he went for a home run ball. And they're only down by a touchdown. I mean, had they converted, you never know what can happen in that game. Now, going forward for Alabama, do I see them, you know, being back on top? No doubt. I mean, it's Alabama. They're returning Nick Saban and a Heisman Trophy quarterback. I mean, there's really nothing else to say. They're returning much more than that. But, you know, I'll expect to see them next year. And uh, finally, let's end on Georgia. You know, they were the best team in college football all year this year. I mean, from week one to week 16. I mean, even with the healthy Alabama in that national championship game, I think Georgia still would have found a way to win that game, especially with them being embarrassed in the SEC championship game. I mean, I think that humbled them. I think that made them hungry. It kind of gave them that attitude of, we have not arrived um, yet. I mean, that was a heck of a win. It was a total team win. Uh, the defense showed up, Kirby Smart showed up, and even the little engine that could, that's what I nicknamed him now. Um, you know, Stetson Bennett showed up. You know, I was interested to see how he respond to some adversity. And uh, late in that game, don't forget, he had a late turnover. He had a fumble, actually. I thought it was a BS call, um, but it happened. 
And uh, not only was he resilient, I'd even kind of go out, I, I would even say he won them that game. He led them, uh, you know, late when they needed him the most. And uh, Georgia fans, I think it's time y'all start putting some respect on that man's name. Uh, he feels really disrespected, not just by people outside of Georgia, but by his own fans in Georgia. So I think it's about time you guys just let that man do his thing. You know, looking forward to next year for Georgia. Uh, you know, they'll have to replace their top two running backs and even the top right receiver. Um, but I just checked Sports Illustrated's recruiting classes, and they have the, the third-ranked recruiting class. So I don't think reloading is going to be an issue. Um, you know, Georgia looked really, really good in that game last week. Uh, they looked fast. They looked strong. And uh, they, they really did look like the better team between them and Alabama. So I'm really, really uh, curious to see what they're going to do next year. Am I ready to dethrone Alabama and crown Georgia as SEC Kings? Not yet, but I do think Georgia is right on that line with them where they're looking eye to eye, there's toe to toe, and next year is going to be a hell of an SEC race. I think it's going to be a hell of an, uh, a college football uh, season because I think there's a couple teams out there that's going to cause them trouble. Um, so if you made me choose uh, who's SEC King for right now, I still say Bama. Uh, if you guys made it through this video, man, I really appreciate you. I just like talking sports. I like talking college football. Um, if you like the video, uh, please comment, like, subscribe. Tell me what you think. Tell me where you think I was right. Tell me where you think I was wrong. I do try to respond back to all my comments. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Please let me know if you guys want me to talk about anything else. Thank you and have a great day.